we're going to combine the ramp problem with the pulley problem. And here we have a ramp attached to a pulley. So there's a six kilogram object hanging vertically from a pulley and the line connects it to a five kilogram object on a ramp, which is inclined 20 degrees to the horizontal. It's really just putting everything together. In this case, we have to sort of make a guess as to which way we think this thing is gonna go. Our example is pretty easy. Hopefully, it's obvious to everyone that this is going to go this way. There's no way the five kilogram object could be able to lift the six kilogram object. So, we are going to assume that this direction is positive. So up the ramp and down over here. As long as the pulley is turning clockwise, that's gonna be positive. For this question, mu is quite high, it's 0.5. So, no problem, let's make some free body diagrams. The five kilogram object, let's make a free body diagram. Five, it's resting on a ramp, 20 degrees. Obviously, there's gravity, Fg, there's a normal force. Now, there's a tension going up the ramp. I'll call that Ft. There is friction. Assuming we're correct and that this, this mass is going to go up the ramp, friction would have to be pointing down the ramp, force of friction. Obviously, I have to break Fg into its two components. Fgy and Fgx. If you're not clear how to do that, refer to a previous video. So there's my free body diagram for the five kilogram mass. For the six kilogram mass, it is certainly easier. There's the force of gravity. And there is the tension. Of course, the gravity on this guy will just be 6g. I'm just going to put that in there and make things a little bit easier. So now what do I do? I look in my directions. I better define my directions. Up the ramp here is x. Perpendicular is y. So in the x direction, what do we get? We get tension minus fgx minus ff equals ma. We don't know tension, we don't know A, and we don't know FF, so we've got a lot of work to do. Let's look in the Y direction first. The Y direction, which is by now hopefully familiar, we see that Fn minus Fgy is equal to zero. So therefore, the normal force is equal to Fgy, which is just Mg cos theta. Fg cos theta. Of course, we need to find the friction. That's why we're doing all this. The force of friction is equal to mu Fn. Fn is Mg cos theta, and that's going to be our expression. Therefore, the force of friction is mu Mg cosine theta. Well, that's okay. So now we've got force of friction, but we still don't have Ft or A, so we've got to go back and look at this guy. If tension is positive here, it's negative here. Tension is stopping. We're trying to prevent this guy from accelerating. So over here, we're going to get a slightly different expression that Fg minus T equals Ma. By now, hopefully that's familiar. Tension should be positive in one side and negative in the other. And now I can combine the two. So let me substitute in Ft minus Mg, I don't know I call that 5, so I don't get confused, 5G sine 20 minus mu 5G cos 20 equals 5A. That's this expression. From this expression, Fg is just 6G. I'm going to write it over here because I'm going to add the two expressions together. I'm going to get 6g minus ft equals 6a. When I add these, my tensions will disappear, and I'll end up with a cumbersome expression of 6g minus 5g sine 20 minus mu 
5g cosine 20 equals 11a. Looks big, it looks kind of awful, but we know g, we know mu, we've got the angles, we've got the masses, it's just an expression. So rearranging, I get that a equals 58.8 minus 16.8 minus 23. All of this is going to be divided by 11, giving us an answer of 1.73 meters per second squared. So that's my acceleration. The only thing I have left to do is find out what the tension is. I've got, I think, just enough room to do it. I'm going to use this expression because it's a little simpler than this equation, but of course I could use either of them. I'll put it into here, and we get 6g minus ft equals 6a, but now I know a. Tension equals 6g minus 6 times 1.73, which works out to be 48 newtons. So now I stop. Does this make sense? Acceleration is 1.7, this direction. The tension is 48. Well, the tension is less than gravity over here, which is why this guy accelerates down. Okay, that makes sense. The tension going up here is more than my friction, sorry, my friction and my gravity put together. 48 is bigger than these two added together, so it will accelerate up. So everything sort of makes sense. Yeah, well, that's not really so hard after all. 